Bobby Dan, good morning. Glad to see you. Glad you nice to see you. Glad you could come. Um, I'm going to talk about how to estimate what you're going to get from VDO. So, uh, just does everybody know what VDO is? All right. Um, so, VDO is a is a device mapper target, uh, DMVDO, that uh, as such maps uh, a logical address space into uh, physical storage on the underlying storage. Um, and while it's doing that, it also provides uh, inline block by block deduplication and compression. And so as a result of that, um, it, you get, you know, it can be thinly provisioned. But then the question is, how thinly provisioned? What kind of storage savings am I going to get if I put my data set on uh, a VDO device? So I'll um, talk about how VDO actually works. So uh, it'll be able to you'll be able to understand uh, how to uh, uh, run the tool to estimate the the um, storage savings <coughs> and what it means. So the VDO de uh, device is consists of two major pieces. There's a uh, block map that manages the allocation of the uh, storage on the underlying device and uh, manages the mapping from the logical block address space to the physical storage. And as I said, while it's doing that, it's deduplicating and compressing as, as it can. Um, and of course, it's a, it's a many to one map and that's in the, this is actually in two separate modules. That's the block map and its associated machinery is in the KVDO module. And then the other big piece is the deduplication index. And that's what keeps track of where the duplication of data actually, uh, actually lies. Uh, and that's the UDS module. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a separate module. Uh, so, Conceptually, how does this work? Conceptually, and this is greatly simplified, uh, when a block is written to the logical, uh, to the logical, uh, to a logical uh, address, a logical, a block. Uh, first thing that, the first thing that uh, BDO does is it computes a signature for that block of data uh, to recognize it, and it uses the murmur hash three, which is a very fast but very effective um, hashing function. It queries the UDS index for that <coughs> signature uh, to, to see if we've seen that uh, block of data before. If, it's, if the block is found, if it's a block we've already seen, uh, it adjusts the block map to uh, indicate that that logical block is already, uh, 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 the data is already on a, a physical block and um, if the uh, signature is not found, it stores and you know allocates a new block from the underlying storage, uh, writes the data to that block, uh, possibly compressing it on the way with LZ4, and then adjusts the block map to indicate that that logical block is where that logical block is is uh, is stored, and in either case it updates the index. Um, Jeez. Uh, and so what's in that index? Um, it, uh, at heart, the UDS index is a fixed size uh, key value store where the keys are the block signatures that were computed for the, the, the data blocks. And the values are hints to the uh, block map for where to find the, find the, the block on the underlying storage. Uh, and it also has a extremely efficient index into the into the uh, key value store, and that's the that's the the real secret. That's the magic of it. Um, the that mas the master index and the most recently used part of the key value store are memory resident, and the rest of the uh, key value store is on a backing store. Um, 
the, um, I'm, I'm being deliberately vague about what most recently used part is, um, but okay, I'm not going to give like percentages or numbers, but the, the uh, memory footprint as well as the backing store are um, fixed size, and the size is fixed at creation time and can't be, can't be updated, can't be changed, not easily anyway. Um, so it, it's sized by the memory footprint. So each gigabyte of memory footprint represents uh, 10 gigabytes of, roughly of the uh, uh, backing store, key value store on the backing store. And that gets you about uh, 10 terabytes of uh, uh, that, that, uh, that records about 10, up to about 10 terabytes of 4K blocks uh, per gigabyte of memory footprint. Um, so the memory footprint is set when the UDS index is created. So one of the options when creating a VDO device is to set the uh, memory footprint and hence the, the, um, the, the size of the index. Uh, that, and that gives you uh, the, the deduplication. That's, so that's the deduplication window, the number of, uh, the number of hashes that you can that, that you can store in there, and that, that shows you sort of how far back in time you can look for duplication. And it's stored in MRU order, and I'll get, get back to that in a moment. Um, um, in the, and as used by VDO, the backing store, the fixed size piece of backing store, is on a uh, contiguous uh, piece of the um, underlying storage that VDO allocates along with its own, uh, the, with the block maps uh, metadata. So some of the key features, key features of the UDS index um, are that it is, um, it's very decoupled from the block map. In, it's in a separate, it's even in a separate uh, kernel module. It's decoupled from the block map. It's uh, advisory rather than definitive, so it, it's not closely tied to the block map. The block map part doesn't depend on it particularly, uh, so that, for instance, if the system is heavily loaded, the index won't be a, a roadblock or a, a bottleneck in the, um, uh, the right path. Um, among other things, this means that it has a very skinny API. There's only a handful of calls to basically start and stop indexing and request, you know, feed it hashes to look up. It also has very minimal interfaces to the system services that it needs. It needs to read and write its backing store because of only part of it is in memory at any given time. It has, uh, you know, some threading for performance, so it has to manage threads, and it does. It also has some timekeeping. So the interfaces to those things are very are very small, very slim. Uh, the very mathematical part in the middle is written in uh, very standard C. It's, you know, it's very portable, very, uh, uh, very standard you know, vanilla C. Uh, the bottom line, literally, uh, is that with very minor changes, it can be built either as a, a kernel module or as a user space library. And of course, that's what we're going to exploit in a moment. When you, so to, to uh, back up for a second, when you create the UDS index, or in particular when you are creating a VDO device, uh, you can specify, there's a lot of things you can specify uh, for the, there are several things you can specify for the, to size the, the deduplication index for that VDO volume. Um, this depends on some uh, convenient properties of real world data sets. Uh, there is uh, temporal locality, which means that a block is, a block that's written is much more likely to be a duplicate of a block that was written recently uh, as opposed to a block that was written a long time ago. I mean, if you pick backup sets, uh, 
uh, a duplicate block in, in, in the backup is m much more likely to be a duplicate of something that was backed up yesterday than something that was, say, backed up last year and was deleted and hasn't been you know, in a backup set since. So uh, this is, um, that's one of the reasons why a, a fixed size works well. Because, and also as I mentioned, I think I mentioned, the uh, key value store is stored in MRU order. So whenever a, uh, whenever a hash is uh, added or found, it, um, it moves that to the front of the, uh, the front of the index. So the things that, it doesn't matter very much if uh, um, entries roll off the end of the index because those are the things that are extremely unlikely to ever be seen again anyway. Um, and since it's merely advisory to, it's advi I don't want to, merely is probably the wrong word. If, since it's advisory to the uh, KVDO, um, there's no harm to the to VDO or KVDO or the block map to write another uh, another copy of the data. You know, you might miss a tiny bit of, of deduplication, but there's there's no correctness harm in it. Uh, so, so, <clears throat> so that's a factor in in setting the index size, um, the the uh, temporal locality of the duplication. Uh, the other thing is, uh, there's a sequential or a, a spatial locality that's often found in, in real-world data sets. And that means that uh, if, uh, if one block is a duplicate, chances are a whole lot of blocks around it are also duplicates. Um, so think, you know, uh, big backup sets or uh, container images, uh, VM images, things like that. If you find one uh, duplicate block, chances are there's a whole slew of duplicate blocks nearby. Uh, what that means is that the, not, every in, not every hash has to be in the, um, in the master index. Uh, so if, a, if only a, a fraction of the hashes are in the master index, once one duplicate is found in the master index, that will now be uh, part of the most recently used part of the of the uh, key value store. It'll be in it'll be in the memory uh, resident part, and those the remaining the the near a lot of the nearby duplicate blocks um, will be found in in memory already without having to go through the, the master index. So one of the options when you create the the UDS, in other words, when you and when you create a, a video volume is to specify a sparse index, and that's what that means. So, that's a, so a sparse index has all of the key value uh, pairs in the key value store, but only a, a, a selection of them are in the master index. Um, and so you get, uh, you could get, uh, you might get uh, 10 times the deduplication window for the same size a memory footprint, um, or or alternatively, uh, you know the same uh, the same deduplication window with a smaller memory footprint. Um, but bear in mind the backing store is is, is, is footprint is still going is going to be the size of the whole deduplication window. Um, so so. Um, what can we do to estimate uh, the storage savings that we're going to get and uh, try to uh, maybe tune some of these uh, parameters a little bit? Well, I said the UDS can be built as a user space library. Uh, the Murmur Hash 3 is also very, you know, it's mathematical standard stuff, so it compiles nicely as a kernel object or a user space object. And similarly with the LZ4 compression uh, that uh, VDO uses. So the estimator is built against the UDS library, the user space murmur hash 3 object, and the user space LZ4 library. So it's using the exact same, uh, the exact same code that uh, VDO is using. So what it does is it basically does what uh, KVDO does up to the point of, you know, writing to 
uh, storage and uh, keeping a block map. So we, we don't need that for this. So for each, uh, so if you you can run it over a um, a directory tree. So for each directory, it will read each file. For each file, it will read each block. For each block, it will do just what VDO does. It will computer murmur hash three uh, signature. It will query the index. If the, uh, if the uh, block hash is not found in the index, it's a new block. So we uh, treat it like VDO would treat a new block. We check to see if it's uh, compressible by LZ4. And while we're doing this, we're tallying up the results. So it keeps a, you know, keeps a running count of you know, files, uh, uh, files read, blocks read, uh, blocks duplicate, and you know, how compressible, how much compression is available. And then it prints out a, a summary at the end. So here's our command line. So, so now let's run it and see what happens. Um, the, the, um, my, when I implement a uh, command line utility, the first thing I implement is the help option because I can't remember what I'm doing from one minute to the next. So, um, so there's the help. Uh, the first two options up there um, uh, allow it to just, just to c compute the results from compression and uh, just compute the results from uh, deduplication, because it can sometimes be hard to tease those apart. The index option is mandatory because, of course, in VDO, the uh, VDO hands it its uh, backing store in user space, at the user space utility. You have to give it a file to tell it where to put a file, where to put its backing store, a file to put its backing store. And please don't put it on the uh, file system that, you're, uh, that you are estimating because it'll just be confusion. And then the two interesting, the two more interesting options, the memory size, um, that's, again, specifying the size of the index by its memory f uh, footprint um, and the sparse option, which, you know, again, whether to use a sparse index or a uh, dense index. So here are a couple of examples. Um, in a slash uh, U2 workspace, I have about 50 checked out source keys, mostly UDS and uh, VDO, KVDO source plus all of their, all the test harnesses and test uh, infrastructure and, uh, uh, <laughs> and probably more log files than my management thinks I should keep on there. Um, so I uh, ran the estimator over it and uh, bolded things. It, it found it was almost half of it was uh, duplicate stuff because of course if you've got, even with, if you have different branches of VDO checked out, chances are most of the files are the same. Um, also, all those text files. Sorry. Sorry. So, the dedic percentage means how many uh, files are duplicated? Well, it means how much it, how much, it's actually. Blocks. No, it's how, yeah, it's how much it uh, would shrink by deduplication. So, that's how much reduction you get. Okay. It's confusing. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, I could, if I moved that to a VDO device, I could put it in a little over a uh, one fourth of the, the storage. Um, and yeah, probably make my management happier. Um, so, so, I, uh, so I tried that. I copied it into a VDO device. And, and then I said, ask VDO stats. That's a selection from the VDO stats command. And I'll be darned, VDO stats, it, actually, if you multiply the logical blocks used by 4K, it comes out to be just a little bit more than the 86 gigabytes of, uh, that were scanned. And that's because the, the um, estimator does not count the um, uh, file system metadata, but if obviously the VDO device does, because it's written on it. Um, so the, it came out, I was, it was kind of surprising, it actually came out to be just about the 73% that the estimator uh, guessed. So I think this is a good, um, that <laughs> big, big uh, uh, thing full of uh, uh, sources and, uh, and uh, log file, uh, text files is probably a good candidate for, uh, for a VDO. Um, I tried another thing too, uh, slash U2 slash exchange is a bunch of backups of, um, uh, of a, a, a mail server. And uh, this is about uh, two and change uh, terabytes of, of backups. And evidently, 
it doesn't compress because evidently the contents are, are compressed, but the, um, a lot of the backups are backing up the same file uh, day after day, apparently, because the deduplication shrinks it by eight, yeah, almost a factor of 10. Um, and um, uh, uh, then I tried the same thing with a sparse index. Um, I, tried, I estimated the exchange uh, backups with a sparse index. And notice I lost about 2% of the deduplication. So these things, also these backup files are huge. So there's probably a lot of, uh, that they probably have very good spatial locality. So it doesn't need all the, everything in the, uh, in the master index. It'll find most of the duplication. Um, and, uh, The um, uh, Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux uh, uh, storage guide has some real good guidelines for, uh, for configuring a VDO, in, including configuring the uh, UDS index size. So I would suggest starting there, starting with those guidelines, using those as the arguments to the estimator, run the estimator, and then you can adjust the sparseness and the size of the index and see if you know see if you can get the same deduplication with uh, um, you know with a smaller index or get a uh, bigger either way right either get a the same deduplication with a smaller index or get more with a you know or get the same with a sparse or nearly the same so um, it's on it's on GitHub, it's open source, it's hanging around there. Um, any questions, sir? Uh, when we can expect D and DM video under a mainline kernel? Oh. Because it's part of the Red Hat kernel, but uh, like for Fedora compiling bug rightly, it's Fedora. Um, sorry. The, so the question is about uh, getting into the mainline kernel, and I can't. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, there's. We are. Uh, we're working on it. Um, we have a parallel development going on to, you know, make it kernel friendly or something like that. But yeah, right now it can be kind of a pain to. You have to go if you want to run it on Fedora. You have to go get it from GitHub and and, and build it. Um, I think actually the risk of revealing important, I mean, we've had meetings. We're, we're having meetings about, you know, about this, but I, beyond that, I, I, I can't say much. Pardon? Oh, yes. Oh, thank you, Andy. Uh, copper, it's in a copper um, repository as well. Was there a question in the back? I was the same question for me. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, boy. Uh, is there any chance that you guys could essentially, uh, you know, long-term future integrate the video stuff into, say, uh, you know, LVM? So, like, when you create an LP device or add, like, a, a physical volume to a VG, it transparently, you'd like, there would be an option to just say, hey, you know, optimize this for video as well, and LV just takes, takes care of it for you. Um, so the question is about uh, adding it to um, LVM. Um, I'm not sure about the, I'm not sure about uh, optimizing. Uh, there's ongoing effort to integrate it, integrate the video with LVM. Oh really? Um, okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I, um, when you are you are trying to block, you mean block level. Sorry, that's a good question again? You, you, you are saying that the video is if you look at the box, and it means box on a device network. Yes, yes. Uh, it, uh, and it's, it's 4K blocks. It's highly optimized for, video is highly optimized for uh, deduplicating and compressing on 4K blocks. And it, let's say, it can go, um, less than wonderfully if you use a, try to uh, use it uh, with things that have a different block size. Yes. 
so this uh, will scan files and file directories. Is there any uh, support coming up for scanning block devices? Uh, as a matter of fact, I didn't mention that, but yes, if you uh, on the so the question the question was about scanning other things like such as uh, whole devices as opposed to as well as directory trees. And yes, if you uh, call it with a uh, like dev SDA as the as the uh, um, argument, it will in fact scan the block device block by block. Um, so yeah, if you have some storage that's whole whole device. Based, yes, this will this will scan it that as well. Who? You have to ask about this. You say that it uses 4K blocks, and how does it work with compression? For example, if you compress 4K block to 3K block, what do you do? <coughs> ah, so okay. So the question was about the compression. Uh, the compression is done at the 4K block level. Um, <coughs> we're going to throw us out in a moment. Um, the compression is done at the 4K block level, uh, so it. It doesn't bother, the DDO doesn't bother with compression unless it compresses to less than half a block. Yeah. And, and the estimator takes that into account. It yeah. does, the, does the same thing with it. Yeah, so you, if it compresses to 2K, then you put two compressed 2K blocks into one. Yes, okay. yes, if, yeah. it, if it compresses to 2K, it will, it will shove those two K blocks. And the block map accounts for that. The block map may point to a physical block or a fragment of a compressed fragment of a physical block. So. Thank you very much. I'll be, I'll be around. <laughs> I can answer any of <laughs>